Because we want to deliver as much as we possibly can to you guys, we have two throwdown workouts. One is for those that still have equipment or access to a gym. The other one is our at-home workout. For the at-home version, for those that do not have equipment or if you just want to do some body weight work, for total reps, from zero to three minutes, you will do a 400 meter run and then AMRAP push-ups in remaining time. At the three minute mark, you'll get a one minute rest break and transition. From four to eight, you'll do a 400 meter run and then it's AMRAP air squats, another one minute transition, from nine to 14 now, you will do a 400 meter run, AMRAP burpees during that time, one minute transition, and then you will finish off from 15 to 21 with a 400 meter run, and then an AMRAP of eight push-ups and 16 air squats going back and forth. Training Big Tank at home, do yeah! Welcome to the At Home Throwdown. I'm Max El Hajj. My name's Rand Dorman. My name is Ronald Dorman. I'm Mia Gianelli. Yes, you are. <laughs> if you're new to this series, this is where we announce a workout for you to do at home while you're quarantined. Help me out, Brandon. Yeah, this is number two. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to talk like this the rest of the time now because that's what you made fun of me doing. <laughs> I don't know what else. Help me. <laughs> Help me. <laughs> this week we have the one and only Becky demoing the workout. Let's see her strategy. Well, I'm probably not gonna run super fast on the 400s. I'm gonna try to keep them consistent each round, maybe around 140 or 145. Push-ups, I'll probably break those up into small sets because when my push-ups go, they just go. So I'll try to minimize that fatigue. Air squats, I'll probably just try to keep moving the whole time. Burpees, I'll probably try to keep moving the whole time. And then that last section, just get through what I can. Single reps of push-ups if I have to. Becky's debut. And Owen, look at him running. <laughs> Way ahead. Yeah, Come on, Becky. Can Kayla. we talk about the fact that Chris actually ran behind her in basketball shoes with a GoPro for this? I feel like you should get extra credit for nice. that. Nice. How are you, how's look the camera so smooth? Look at that smooth. <laughs> 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 He's I'm gonna so beat you, hard. Mom. He's gonna get lost now. Oh, oh, oh watch the car. Somebody <laughs> was gonna hit that car. So <laughs> Owen's got great. great running form there, too. Aw, bye, Caleb. Yeah. <laughs> Good luck. Well, Owen's, <laughs> Owen's kind of cheating. This is a nice little loop that she's got for a home gym setup. It is. The loop is 400. She said it was like 390 something. Nice. Pretty close. At our yeah. old place, we had a perfect loop that was was 800. So if you went around the entire thing, um, from like our mailbox back to the mailbox, was literally exactly like 801. So it was awesome. Perfect. Yeah, that's so awesome. But I would probably never run yeah. it. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't until we got to the, our new house. Now I, I run more often. Yeah, is that because your new house or because we're on quarantine? <laughs> because we're on quarantine. Yeah. It was I because I ran a mile and I realized how slow I had gotten and. Uh, you motivated me to be faster, Max. Is Chris Perfect. on a bike? No, he's running. He's just smooth. <laughs> but I, I don't know, know how, how, how out of breath he was <laughs> when he got back. Great run, Becky. All right, so we'll start with push-ups. So she's got 90 seconds, basically, to do push-ups mm -hmm. here. For those that are doing this, make sure you meet the standard. Try to keep body line straight, chest and thighs touch the ground at the bottom. Yeah, I feel like that's probably, obviously in a competitive situation, you're pushing the boundaries of what the standard is as much as you can to get as many reps. But for most people, this is training, and I feel like training your body line to stay relatively tight and actually doing quality reps is more important than getting as mom, high as you can mom. on the leaderboard. <laughs> All right, Caleb, yeah. okay, get down there. <laughs> Start doing your yeah. push-ups. <laughs> Yeah, there's a couple of different ways to look at the push-ups, especially if you're trying to get as many reps as possible, like this workout. One way, so the way that I did it, because I did this at home as well, was just an AMRAP set, uh, basically almost to failure. I was like two reps away from failure, and then I took a long break, just because I knew that no matter what, that was I, I was going to fail at some point. The other way is kind of what Becky's doing here. She did some small sets. She knew that that was going to be the biggest limitation. One way that I've done it, if I'm doing small sets, is to do cluster sets. So it would be like five reps, rest three seconds, four reps, rest three seconds, three, rest three, two, rest three, one, and then I take a longer break and then go back to five. So then I know that those are like basically clusters of 15, and it just is a quick way to know that you have descending reps, it helps you psychologically, and hopefully you can move through it a little bit faster. Yeah, I think too, like from a competitive standpoint, if you can actually do your reps a little quicker, that helps, but 
that's just going to be limited by pressing strength oh, and for just sure. how, how good you are at push-ups in general. Yeah. Yep. I know the push-up singles very yeah. well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I, I finished with like 10 singles because I was just trying, you know, again, yeah. like if you're grinding them out, you got to do what you can at the end, but what everyone's going to fail at this point. What do you think Adam just said to Caleb? Go inside. So. <laughs> <laughs> you just redlined me. Get inside. I would. I don't think I would be that conversational if I had just ran a ninety-second four hundred and done ninety seconds of max push-ups. Becky's also just very fit. <laughs> yeah, I'm not. <laughs> I think one of the keys here is having a consistent running time. And one of the things that I noticed is my last run was way slower than the other one. So. Being able to hit whatever your, your first round is, having consistency there is going to give you the most time on the last couple of AMRAPs, and then being efficient at running. My running is still just like so inefficient that I feel like when I got back and had to do the air squats in this next round, I was like, man, my quads are already blown up and I haven't done one air squat yet. Yeah. Is Chris going to run backwards on this one? Mm, talented. Pretty impressive. <laughs> or he could be running forwards with his hand facing backwards. I mean, this is he, training for the day? Uh, probably not. He has to get his pump on. <laughs> <laughs> Becky uh, played college soccer, so she's very comfortable running. Yeah. And Smooth cadence. Yeah. Not so much like me. <laughs> <laughs> me and you are running. You can hear, <laughs> hear our feet hit the ground. Yeah. It's like, dum, dum, yeah. dum, dum. This cement would be cracking <laughs> under my feet. And people are like, oh, run softer. I'm like, what? No, it's In not how gravity works. <laughs> <laughs> Please explain to me how. <laughs> <laughs> my ankles are too weak to absorb my body. Yeah. Was she actually checking how fast she's running there? She's probably trying to keep her same pace. I like that if she was. Player, that's, yeah. That was halfway that's through and yeah. <laughs> checking to see where she's at halfway. I think that's definitely worthwhile. Becky's very smart. In general, but like with training. <laughs> she, well, just, I mean, she, just, would, she would go into this with a plan and this want time to, to compliment I Becky. I like Becky. I know. <laughs> More than I like you. <laughs> Becky's like the opposite of Mike. When Mike's on here, we just hate on him, and when Becky's on here, it's <laughs> like nice. <laughs> 125, getting a little faster. Yeah, there. so I mean, that's impressive. All right, air squat time. You can see her legs are burning a little bit too. Mine, the I basically took like a 10 second break, so she did much better than me with like a five second break there to start. Really good cadence to start. Ooh, that's a lot of air squats. <clears throat> One of the things that you guys at home can think about is what to do with your arms here. You can see she's kind of keeping them in front, but like low so her shoulders aren't burning because you do have burpees after this and then you have air squats and push-ups the following AMRAP. So saving your shoulders and arms any way that you can helps. A lot of people do air squats where their arms are like straight out to kind of counterbalance and that will not work <laughs> <Yeah>. this one. <laughs> Yeah, I know like when they did air squats and Murph at the games, they had a standard that you couldn't touch the ground because people were like pushing, pushing off the off, ground yeah. basically, mm -hmm. which does make a big difference. Like it actually yeah, can no, it help you. Um, but it, it also is generally most people when their hands are getting to the ground, they're just getting below parallel. So it can also be like a good kinesthetic cue for you. That actually is exactly what I did because, you know, so those that know me. My <laughs> air squat depth's not great just because of some issues with the knee. So I have to make sure that I'm like really focusing on getting below parallel. So I use the ground as that target each time. She's checking her heart rate maybe. Or time. No, I think Interval time. time, yeah. Yeah. I would think. Yeah, the it doesn't only thing matter what your heart rate is, you gotta keep going anyways. Yeah. The only thing that you can really do with air squats is go faster. I feel like most people can just like can most people that are trained in doing a lot of squat volume under fatigue can kind of keep moving at a slow pace. And when you watch a like this year at Wadapalooza, they had the weighted vest muscle up run air squat workout, and the people that squatted faster just did air squats faster, made up a significant amount of time. So I feel like it's just speed at that point. Yeah, there was a huge difference with the individuals. I didn't. It was hard with the teams just because one person could hold yeah. everyone else back. But some of the guys that I watched would get off the rings maybe 45 seconds after someone else and catch up to them in the 100 air squats, which is crazy. Yeah, just a lot of time can be made up by just <clears throat> literally just moving a little faster. 
Yeah, that she did, split second at the top though makes it uh, like yeah, so, it much. Hurt so much less. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny you say that because like I was really struggling trying not to do that, but it was way easier for me to get in a comfort zone. But I knew that that's too slow to be competitive. Yeah. Uh, still, I rested at the top, kind of where Becky is here, just like that quick pause. What she did is a really good thing, though. She basically went unbroken the entire time, which I did not. Yeah. I just try to do fast sets of like 15 to 20. Yeah, her her midline and her form started to change a little bit as she got to the end of that. So that's something to be conscious of, too. Like we talked about training versus competing. If you're trying to get your best score and your movement starts to break down, like you might want to just push through that. If you're just training for like optimal body positions and just you know trying to improve your squat pattern during this time at home in, in quarantine you might want to do like you know Aww. oh look at this <laughs> how about that yeah. and just so everyone knows becky is not sick this was like the second highest pollen count day in atlanta history why would you, people think she was she's sick? like blowing her nose oh okay yeah, yeah. This, it is disgusting. I it's got my crazy. car. You can kind of see on Chris's car over there. It's like a nice yellow layer of the tree's snot everywhere. Yeah. It's, it's gross. It's been brutal the last week. So, just so you guys know, at home, 29 push ups for the first AMRAP and then 81 squats on that AMRAP. So, now we're going into the burpee AMRAP, which, in my opinion, was the worst by far. I'm really glad you have the I most didn't do time that. to do them, right? <laughs> Her run cadence looks very similar to the first round, so I'm interested. I'm sure she'll come in under 130 again. Yeah, I wish I could do that. Just <laughs> smoothly run when I'm tired and wave. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Hey, kids. <laughs> I, don't I don't acknowledge anyone. If I'm running and somebody like waves to me and says hi and smile, I don't even look at them. Yeah, I also don't move out of the way when cars <laughs> are coming. <laughs> just like, no, you, you yeah, move. No. I think, yeah, just hit me. <laughs> Put me on my misery. Okay, that's true. <laughs> I don't want to do this anymore. I'm Max learning. goes to the dark side there. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, she's checking her watch at the same points every single yeah, time, which I, I like. That's something that everybody at home can learn from too, like being thoughtful about how they're pacing and making sure that they're hitting their splits each time. It does actually make a difference. I did it with, I did some running intervals with Kyle Lou, but it's probably been months ago now and actually wearing a GPS watch and paying attention to where you are and helping yourself like pace and regiment your speed makes a big difference for enduring longer intervals or repeats like this. Yeah. Was that when you had to like sit down in the grass in between intervals? <laughs> there were, yeah, there have been a lot of times where I've been humble. I wish minute, people could but... see Mia's sly smile she yeah, has right now when she, she looks at Max. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we have to be socially distanced though. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, All so right, 129. 129. Pretty impressive. So how long does she have to do burpees now? Three and a half so, minutes? So yeah, three and a half minutes. It's Ugh. a five minute AMRAP. Who writes these words? <laughs> <laughs> Blah. That just it sounds like puke city. Another really good job of like getting right onto the mat and going, that was like a five second transition. I think I was probably more like 15 or 20 seconds before I started. Yeah, there's a, a like a lot of um, individual variation when people are trying to get a certain number of reps and you have three and a half minutes you can just move kind of slow and deliberately and consistently if you're somebody like Becky who has just a really good system for breathing and managing her heart rate but maybe not as much explosive energy and then other people might go in and just do like 10, 10 fast reps and rest 15 or 20 seconds and repeat that and get the same number over the course of three and a half minutes. Whereas yeah. if you take the explosive person and you have them try to do a smooth, deliberate cadence, by the end of the three and a half minutes, they don't get as many reps because they still redline. So I think a lot of learning your own body and how you need to navigate different challenges is uh, like that's, that's one of the really cool things about competing in a sport or in a fitness test like this is that people can solve the equation in so many different ways. With regular burpees like this where you're jumping your feet up, I've worked on like trying to not jump as far, like not having to compress so hard. Um, I mean, she seems to be doing fine with it, but that gets really tough for me. So Meaning like her feet getting close to her hands. Right. Okay. Like there's no yeah, standard yeah. on that, right? Yeah. So um, I try to just like widen my feet up and not jump them quite as far. And yeah. I've noticed for me that makes it a lot easier. Yeah. If you have good adductor mobility too, you can almost like straddle your way up and not necessarily even bring your feet together. But a lot of that's just dependent on the standard. We just, The standard here is just basically leave the ground, arms yep. clap overhead, right? Yep, as long as you yep. get overhead and, and touch your hands overhead with the feet off the ground, that's a good rep. So you can also step these up if you want. 
Um, I did a mix, so kind of Max, going back to your point, she's kind of slow and steady. I decided that the fastest route for me was going to be doing like sets of 10 to 15 fast, taking a break, 10 to 15 fast. So I started with your a breaks are not breaks; they're four <laughs> seconds. <laughs> I, I was taking pretty long, but I was messed up. I actually uh, had a mental challenge in this workout. It's way tougher than it looks, too. I think like people see three minutes of burpees, but it just it feels <laughs> awful too. But you know, one of the things that I was thinking is like, okay, how can I maximize the time that I have? And to me, slow and steady. I just w I wasn't getting enough reps per second, if that makes sense. So yeah. I did as fast as I could, took five or 10 seconds, as fast as I could, back and forth. And Becky's just- Cruising. Slow and steady, or moderate and steady. Yeah, I mean, she's doing a great job. And to Mia's point too, I think one of the ways that you can start thinking about that is practicing this when you are doing your normal training, like where are my feet going? How does this feel with my breathing? Should I do step ups versus the two foot jump? Should I straddle like Max talked about? And one of the ways I always recommend my clients do this is like when they are doing intervals or if they have EMOMs with burpees, a lot of people that are really bad at them, I'll give them different EMOM variations where they have to do a different type each time. So it may be right foot step up only on the odd minute, left foot step up on the even minute, whatever it may be. And those are ways that you can start thinking about, okay, what's the most efficient way for me? How many burpees did she just do in that interval? So she did 44. I think a lot of people are not going to do 44. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so these little details that we talk about with regards to movements, I feel like, you know, we normally create these throwdowns for the normal, like when we're not in quarantine to help people with qualifier style workouts to compete in the sport of CrossFit. In an at-home setting, I'm assuming more people are doing this just for a competitive fitness outlet. And those little details, they might not seem that important because you're like, well, I'm not really racing. But if you wanna make sure that your fitness is rising over time, then quantifying, like how many burpees can you do in this period of time when you're under fatigue, those little details are the thing that allow you to start moving faster. And by moving faster over time, you basically learn how to be more efficient with your energy, you learn how to be more explosive off the ground, and those things are creating the adaptations that create fitness and like getting people more muscle mass and leaner. So those details really, do matter even in a non-performance setting. I think from a performance setting, they obvious, like it's pretty obvious that those details are the thing that create elite performance, but even just for general fitness, I think it could be helpful to just be conscious of the way you're moving and the way you're trying to solve the equation. I'm pretty sure I see a Chris shoe <laughs> at the corner of the camera there. Yep. <laughs> oh, yeah. How are you holding that camera, man? Backwards? <laughs> yeah? That's impressive, man. How tired were you? Chris gives a shrug yeah. for all those watching. <laughs> he's, he's just he's got not tired of burpees or squats. Yeah, yeah. Long not tired at all. Yes. Not a big deal. He, he did a workout four by four hundred at a one thirty pace, rest four minutes. Yeah, exactly. So impressive. <laughs> this is good. Yeah, that's still make me work, make me breathe hard. She's still smooth. Yeah, she doesn't even look that tired. Yeah, to me, I think the running was actually the the harder part. Push ups felt pretty good. The air squats were just kind of like, it is what it is. The burpees definitely got hard, but to me, I think running at a fast cadence was really challenging in this workout. I'm gonna blame Becky for my meltdown in a normal throwdown this week because she did this at 10 o'clock, and that means I did mine at like 12.30 or one in the, in, the, in, the, in the hottest part of the day. So it's that, basically Becky's fault that I blew up. Thanks, As you can Becky. see, Max is still thinking about <laughs> the workout that he yeah. did. I'm a narcissist. <laughs> Still emotionally recovering. Yeah. All right. 132, 133. So, yeah, so she has about four and a half minutes now to do eight <laughs> push ups and then 16 air squats. So, very sustainable run speed. So, that's a six minute mile pace for basically for every one of the intervals. I'm guessing most people are not going to be able to run that Jeez. fast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that no. was our uh, fit cameraman. <laughs> Yeah, I would say that most people are probably gonna be closer to that 145 to two minute if if they do even have some run volume and then yeah. those that don't, they may be over two minutes. And that's okay, like you just gotta plan out, okay, what's my attack strategy then on push-ups yeah. if I only have a minute to do them? Yeah, so you just be trying to work faster essentially on the on right. the mixed elements at the end of the interval. Do they have matching shoes? Uh, I don't think so. Becky's <laughs> yeah. look a little bit more pinky orange. Pinky? Pinky. I'm gonna call Adam out here. You know, he was standing up the entire time you were doing your workout, like really watching. <laughs> <laughs> he, yeah. He's just looking at the paper. Yeah. Is he sitting. counting or is he reading? <laughs> oh yeah, he's counting. He's counting, keeping track of time. 
He's a, definitely not judging her movement. <laughs> <laughs> he definitely judged my movement while we were going. I got like two squats in and he was like, stand all the way up. I was like, damn it. You don't judge your own wife. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta be careful, for sure. So she's breaking them in half? Yeah, I mean, I think those are smart breaks. I you see it starting to slow down. <laughs> What's the uh, the rep cadence of the? It's so eight. it's yeah, it's eight push-ups and then sixteen air squats, and it's just AMRAP going back and forth between those for the, the remaining time in that six-minute AMRAP. Yeah, I would imagine almost anybody in the world doing this, no matter the fitness level, the bottleneck will be push-ups for, sure. for this one. Yeah, yeah, the push-ups the last few <laughs> rounds that I did were pretty challenging. I was able to keep them unbroken, but like my pressing endurance, I would say is is a little bit better than most, but. Those that if you if you have issues with pressing, you definitely are, you should think about this as I'm going to start breaking them up from the very first round with a really short break, and then just kind of change that break as needed. Yeah, I've done I've done in my past a ton of push-ups for training for wrestling or even for football. Push-ups would be used almost as a form of punishment if like people went off sides yeah. or something like that. But the the what CrossFit exposed me to is how difficult push-ups can be if you're near max heart rate. It can yeah. be such a different stimulus on the body. It's just like it's so much pressure and your heart rate being high makes it difficult to press. Even if you're pressing muscles aren't failing, you're like, I need to take a break because my heart feels like it's gonna explode. Yeah. I always wondered why they did like up downs or push ups as punishment for going yeah. offside. Like, maybe you <laughs> yeah. guys should just teach us better strategies so that we don't go offside. Yeah. <laughs> Side note. Did you do this workout, Mia? No, Max. Oh. I did not do this workout. Are you even training? Yeah, when's the last quarantine? time you did a throwdown workout, Mia? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know, like I'm doing 60 take, minute bikes yeah. like every other day at home. Yeah. We're not impressed. <laughs> We already knew your legs were fit. <laughs> Do you want to tell the world why I'm skipping workouts? I just air quoted. No. They can't see me. Yeah. No, we don't. We want them to just think you're just, slacking. Okay. We, we can hear it in your tone. Mia's pregnant! <laughs> no, oh, I'm God. Not. Jeez. That would have broke the heart of your... Uh, no. All right, we got to restart this whole video. Yeah. <laughs> Kyle doesn't watch them anyways. Dang, Kyle. Thanks for supporting us. Sorry, Jordan supports me. Jordan watches all of them, actually. I know. She does? Just, just for Mia, she says. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> I don't blame her. Is this interval end at 21? Yeah, it ends at 21, so she's got 30 seconds left. Come on, Becky, sprint finish. Come on, Becky. <laughs> you can't yeah, sprint I finish. <laughs> 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 yeah. Grind these last oh, few she's hours. Keeping her That's pace. Really Go, Becky. She's definitely a good pacer, and she's definitely getting to failure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's nothing worse yeah. than failing something that's like an upper body press. Yeah. You just, you literally she can't, can't do push anymore. Ups, push ups. <laughs> she did it. Oh, yeah, still could, going. Yeah, the, oh uh, yeah, she did, here's a little sprint finish. And Adam did his <laughs> job. Woohoo! Great job, Becky. Great job, Adam. Um, I think I stuck to my plan fairly well. I usually, run faster than I intended, which is what I did, but that didn't hurt me too bad. Um, Push-ups went away faster than I was expecting in that first set, but they felt better than I was expecting in that last set. Um, yeah, burpees were just keep doing one more, keep doing one more, and same thing with squatting. Um, I thought this workout was pretty fun. The running wasn't so long that it just felt boring, like, oh, I'm just running for forever. And it was good to get some upper body push and some squatting. It's all of those movements, I think, are movements that you can just keep doing if you tell yourself you can keep doing. So this is a good little mental test, too. That's the workout for this week. Thank you for watching The Throwdown. Tomorrow, April 3rd at 12 o'clock, me and Brandon are gonna do a live Q&A for training through this COVID situation. Remember, classroom, on trainingthinktake.com, we have a ton of resources for educating yourself as a coach or an athlete on your body. And we love you very much. There's a lot of stuff for Training Think Tank. Go to trainingthinktake.com. <laughs> it's a wrap, you know what I'm saying? Your boy Project Pata in this thing, man. Hey, look, man, thank y'all for watching Training Think Tank YouTube channel. Y'all hit that motherfucking subscribe button, you know what I'm saying? So y'all go ahead, man. Thank y'all for watching the channel, you know what I'm saying? Hit that motherfucking subscribe button, let it be known, let it be known, let it be known, you know what I'm saying? Hot talk!